Hey guys, I'm Science Potato, and today we're going to be discussing 3D printing the face shields um, to help support the COVID-19 shortage of medical safety equipment um, hospitals are going through right now. So this face shield is an open source design available for free on the internet, and with it they supply a bunch of print settings, and they have an average time of about two and a half hours of print time. I actually run a 3D printing product design business and I do a lot of uh, designing and 3D printing and we're very critical about a print time. We got to be able to print fast. So if we're going to start producing these, we can't do two and a half hours. That's way too slow. So we're going to see how fast we can print these. Um, we've already printed a few hundred of these and we've got our print times down to about 45 minutes. So that's very fast and we're able to print hundreds of these a day now. So I'm going to show you guys um, what you can do to help speed up your print times. An important thing to note is we are using a 0.8 millimeter nozzle for this. And that's the main reason we're able to get such a high print time. Although we have printed with the same settings on a 0.4 mil nozzle. And while it's not perfect, we still get some pretty good results. But I would highly recommend a 0.6 or a 0.8 mil nozzle if you really want to crush your print times on these. So to start off, I am in Kira here, which is my slicer of choice. I do all my professional work in here. And we're going to start with just their draft profile and see what our print time looks like. So we have a print time of almost three hours. That is definitely not going to work for us. So now I'm going to switch to my default profile that I use, that I've built for our printers that we use at our shop. And this is always the starting point and we'll tweak settings from here. So you can see my default profile brings us down to an hour and 20 minutes, which isn't too bad. That's, that's all right. But we're definitely going to see if we can crush that more. So the first thing we're going to do is peek at our breakdown of our print times. So we can see here, looking at this breakdown, that 56% of our print time is going to be spent doing skin layers. So the skin layers, if we zoom in here and look at the visualization of our G-code, is the yellow. And we can see most of this print is yellow. We've got our bottom layers, then a bit of infill, and then our top layers. Not much for inner walls and outer walls. So that's really where we're going to want to try and optimize our print time. So I'm going to start off in the quality tab with my line width. Because we're using a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, I'm going to bump this up to a 1 mil line width. Now for our skin layers, because the skin was the most print time for this part, I'm actually going to go in here and find our top and bottom line width. And this I'm going to set to 1.4 millimeters. And that's going to give us a huge savings in our print time. We're going to be producing very thick lines there. Now let's just hit slice and see what it looks like. Look at that, we're down to a 42 minute print time. That's not too bad. Now we want to analyze this visualization. So we want to get a really close look at this. So if we look in the corner here, we can see two things. One, there's a gap right here, and that's not really good for the structure of the print. We're definitely going to want to clean that up. And if we zoom in here, we can also see there's a gap between these two outer walls. And that's definitely not good. If these don't connect, this part will fail and will be useless. So we definitely want to fix that as well. Now I'll get a good view, and I'll drag my slider down here, and I'll cut through these layers and see what the internals look like. So we can see we have a few layers of infill right here, and we're actually going to want to get rid of that. We don't want to have this low density pattern followed by a thick 1.4 mil line on top, because that might ruin the, the quality of the print. So we're going to make that solid. So I'm going to go to my shell tab, and I'm going to set my bottom layers to eight. Now I'll re-slice it, and that infill pattern should have disappeared. 
being left with just top and bottom layers, making it totally solid. Yeah, just like that. We can mouse over here, see our time estimates, and we can notice that infill is removed from this list, letting us know that there is no infill at all. Now we're going to want to deal with this corner here. So we have this little gap here, and the reason for that gap is because we're using three walls. We've got our outer wall and two inner walls. And because our line width is so thick on the skin here, it cannot fit that line all the way through here. So it's just leaving a void instead. And we don't want that. So how we're going to fix that is we're going to go to our wall line count. You can see we're using three walls. We're going to drop that to two walls. Now we'll re-slice our part again. And voila, that void has been completely filled now that material is able to access that void. Now that that's solved, we'll work on this tiny little gap we've got here. The reason that gap is there is because the line width we're using doesn't pair up with the thickness of this wall. And so we need to address that. So how I'm going to do that is in the Shell tab, I'm going to scroll down to Horizontal Expansion. And this is an awesome setting that's very useful for tweaking fine tolerances on prints. If you ever notice there's slight little gaps between walls and stuff like that, you can use this setting to adjust that. We can see by default I have it set to negative 50 microns. So that means it is actually shrinking the dimensions of the part on the x and the y axis by 50 microns on every face. So that means a circle with a negative 50 micron horizontal expansion would have 0.1 millimeters reduced off of its diameter. And we're going to set that to negative 150 microns. And we'll slice it again and see what that looks like. This will bring those two walls closer together. There we go. Now we can see that's looking better. Just to be sure, let's set this to negative 0.2 and see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that looks acceptable. All our voids have been filled. You can see there is a tiny little gap right there, but because of these thick lines, most of this will actually get filled up with plastic. Now we'll do another quick slice, bottom to top, make sure everything looks correct as we are expecting it to be. And this part's looking good. So now with those few changes we've made, we're at a 46 minute print time and we're using 54 grams of material. When you're doing mass production of these, something like 54 grams is kind of an issue because that doesn't really divide well into a thousand grams which would be on a full spool of plastic. So it would actually be nice if we could get this to just below 50 grams because then we know one single spool of plastic can make 20 of these for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually reduce the thickness of this part by 300 microns which is one single layer and now we're down to exactly 50 grams. And this part is only a single layer thinner than it normally would be, which is still fine. And there we have it. We managed to reduce our print time from almost three hours down to 44 minutes. I should mention that a lot of people have issues with the print time estimates on Kira. The reason for that is because they do not have their jerk and acceleration values posted in Kira. If you open up your speed and scroll down, you'll see enable jerk and acceleration control. If you click on those options, it will actually enable those functions and it'll help um, make your print times more accurate. These ones aren't actually tuned for our machine. Um, we have different settings, but the print time is still within one minute of the actual estimate that Kira gives. We'll also take a look at our print speeds here, and you can see our speeds are set to 
totally normal values, 40 millisecond for our outer wall, 55 for our other features, very fast travel speed at 120 millisecond, and a decent initial layer speed of 30 millisecond. Most people go very slow, but we have no issue printing our first layers this fast. All right, thanks for watching, and hopefully this helps you guys produce more face shields. Thanks. If you like my content, please like and subscribe, as I'll be posting much more. All right, bye.